Hello everyone and welcome to the Introduction to C series, where we are going to take a deep dive into the C language and learn things from the ground up. Before we get into the particulars of the C language, I want to start at the most basic level possible and review really quickly how computers sort of work on a low level. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the bits and bytes of data by taking a deep dive into data representation. So the very first thing that we want to start off with is counting, because how do we represent counting in the most basic way possible? Typically it's represented by counting on your fingers, where you would put up one finger per number. So you'd count one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 10. This is known as a unary counting system where some symbol is repeated n times or has a base of one. Another example of this might be the tick marks or the tally marks that you see here to the right. The next representation that I wanna talk about is the one that we are probably all most familiar with, and that is the decimal system. In this system, we have 10 symbols. So deca is equal to 10, which is where the decimal comes from. And this is also known as what is called base 10, meaning we have digits from zero to nine. The way that we represent numbers in this system is in various columns, right? So if we look at the example of 201, each of these columns is represented by the 10 to the power of something, right? So we have in the first column, we have 10 to the power of zero, which is one. Uh, then we have 10 to the power of one, which is 10. Then we have 10 to the power of two, which is 100. And so if we take that and multiply it by the number that is in that particular column, we actually get the end number. So in this case, since we have uh, one in this rightmost column, uh, one times one is one. Since we have a zero here, uh, 10 times zero is zero. And since we have a two here, then we have 100 times two is 200. So if we do 200 plus one, we wind up with 201. So all pretty standard stuff. We're all very familiar with this. So one that is common in computer science, but is not necessarily common outside of that is another counting system known as hexadecimals. This system has 16 symbols. So hexa is six, deca is 10, hence we get base 16. So we have in this system, 16 total symbols that are used to represent numbers. So we have our zero through nine, like we do in decibel, but then after that we have A, B, C, D, E, F. You can think of A as 10, B as 11, all the way up to 15, uh, which is F. And the way that this system works is very similar to the decimal system where uh, our, our columns from right to left are 16 to the power of zero, which is one, uh, 16 to the power of one, which is uh, obviously 16, and then 16 to the power of two, which is 256. The representation of numbers in this system aren't quite as obvious as they are in decimal, because you wind up with things like zero C9, which actually is our representation of 201. And how we get that number is we do some multiplication and addition as we did before, right? So we have uh, 16 to the zeroth power is one, right? So one times nine is nine. Right, and then we have in this second column here, we have C, which is uh, in the 16 to the first power. And the way that you basically do that is you count over, starting from zero, over to the symbol that you want, and you multiply that by 16. So in this case, it's 16 times 12, which is 192. And so our 201 is represented by zero C9 or 192 plus nine. But none of these representations are particularly simple when it comes to computing, right? They make sense to us, at least as humans, but they don't make sense at a at a computer level. It's not something that would be easy to implement. And so a system called the binary system was invented to actually handle this. So the binary counting system is quite simple. It only consists of two symbols. So by is for two, AKA, this is a base two number system. So we only have zero and one as our only symbols. These can also be thought of as off and on, or false and true. And this is actually the basis is of what is used for computing. Why is that? Well, if we think of the simple example of turning on and off a light, we have our input, 
right, which is the electricity. That goes through a switch, which in the off position will mean that your light bulb is off. If we flip that switch to the on position, now suddenly our light bulb is on. And so we have these two individual states available, these binary states, if you will. And it's very easily mapped to electricity. Either we have electricity or we don't have electricity. So how can we use this to store data? Well, if we map our numbers to our light bulbs, right, we can say that zero is our off state and one is our on state. So in this case, if the light bulb is off, we have a value of zero. If the light bulb is on, we have a value of one. But how in this system would we represent two? Because we only have two symbols to actually represent zero and one. We don't have anything to represent two, right? And so the answer here would be to add another bulb. The first bulb being on would actually count as two. And then we would leave the second bulb off. Okay, so let's move on to another example. So if two is represented by the right light bulb being off and the left light bulb being on, then how might we represent three? As you might've guessed, you could represent three with two light bulbs that are turned on, right? So we have our bulb here on the right, which being on represents one, and our bulb here on the left, which being on represents two. If we add those together, we get three. So how then might we represent four? Well, as you may have guessed, we'll just kind of repeat the pattern that we did before and add another light bulb. So in this case, we'll add a third light bulb and we'll flip it to on, and that will represent four. How do you think we might represent five? Well, it sort of follows the same pattern as before. We simply turn on the rightmost light bulb, leave the center light bulb off, and leave the leftmost right bulb on. This is how we might represent five. If you think about six, six would be represented by having the rightmost light bulb off, the center light bulb on, and the leftmost light bulb on. So in this case, we have four plus two plus zero. And then as you may have guessed, seven is all three light bulbs on. So we have four plus two plus one. So if we think back to zero being mapped to light bulbs off and one being mapped to our light bulb on, we can start thinking of things in zeros and ones. So our zero is represented by three zeros all the way across. Our one would be represented by zero, zero, one. Two would be represented by zero, one, zero. Three would be represented by zero, one, one. Four would be represented by one, zero, zero. Five would be represented by one, zero, one. 6 would be represented by 110, and 7 would be represented by 111. All of these individual elements, right, or the, these individual elements that we have ones or zero set, those are actually referred to as bits. A bit is a binary digit. It is either a zero or a one. And so we use bits to actually represent data in computers. So if we go back to our example of 201, what might the binary representation of that look like? Well, it's 11001001. How did we get this? If we take a look at our individual columns, we have our 2 to the power of 0 all the way over to 2 to the power of 7. And so if we actually add in our decimal representations of those things, you might see how these begin to add up. As we increase in power of 2 over here, you'll notice that the numbers get exponentially larger and we can add up various combinations of those numbers to actually get the final number that we need. So in this case, what we're actually gonna wind up with is 201 is equal to 128, which is this column, plus 64, which is this column, 32 and 16 aren't used, plus eight, plus one, and four and two are not used. All of that together gives us 201. So you can kind of see how data is actually represented in computers at this point. This is used anywhere and everywhere as far as computers are concerned to represent any kind of data ever. So if we were to flip all of these bits to one, the maximum value that we could represent would be 255 for a total of 256 possible values, being that zero is one of them. So taking a look back for a second, we have 201 represented by eight bits. Well, that eight bits actually has a name in computer science that we can use so that we don't have to reference bits everywhere because it doesn't always make sense to just reference bits, right? More often than not, we're gonna wanna represent something that's a little bit more tangible. And so eight bits is actually equal to one byte. 
And so bytes are a common unit that we will use throughout C and other various languages to represent our data. And we'll generally want to read data in bytes versus in bits, except for a very few set of circumstances where we actually will want to look at the bits. But we'll get into those later in the series. Okay, so one of the most common things that we are going to need is a representation of integers. And integers, at least in C and most other modern programming languages, typically are 32 bits or four bytes worth of data. That means that they hold a total of two to the 32nd power possible value. So around four billion or this massive number that you see down here, that's the exact number of possible values that a integer can hold at 32 bits. We also have something called long integers. These are typically 64 bits or eight bytes. They hold a total of two to the 64th possible values or around 18 quintillion or more specifically this number that you see on the bottom of the screen. Numbers are all great, but how do we represent letters? Well, letters actually have a basic representation called ASCII. And ASCII is the American standard code for information interchange. It was something that was developed in the US and it was one of the, the very first types of data representation other than numbers used in computers. And basically what this does is it maps letters to decimal numbers. And so if we take a quick look at this chart from ASCIIchart.com, we'll see a complete ASCII mapping here. We can actually see that we have, starting at 65, we have the capital letter A, 66, we have the capital letter B, all the way down to Z. And then starting at 97, we have the lowercase letter A, all the way to, down to 122, which is the lowercase letter Z. And you can see we have all kinds of punctuation and other various symbols in here. We also have uh, some non-printing characters here. I'm not gonna get into what those are now, but we will be covering some of those later in the series, but just be aware that they exist. So I hope you guys will join me next time. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, hit the like button, it helps me out, and I will see you guys next time.